In the last video, we talked about the, the concept of a, of a function that describes a wave. Oops. Function of x at a snapshot in time, this function can describe the shape of a wave. And then we talked about two requirements that, that, this, that this function must, must satisfy for, for it to represent a real, real wave. And so those, those requirements, just to summarize, are I'll use the same colors as before. The derivative with respect to x of our function y of x is finite. It is finite. And that's because the string, that means the string really has broken. It's not connected all along itself anymore. And the second requirement we went over was that the second derivative with respect to x of our function describing our wave y of x is also finite. So from the last video, we know these two things. And on this video, we're going to talk about more, a couple more requirements. So say we have our same orange string wiggling along here. Uh, some some complicated thing happening. But we know that we know that whatever whatever this function is, we know that these two things must be true for it to be a real wave. So in this video I want to talk about, about the time dependence of the wave. So we're no longer just taking a snapshot of this wave, but we're we're just watching it wiggle around. <coughs> Excuse me. So as time passes by, this, this wave will change. This will move around. So, so at a certain point, so we have our function y telling us how, telling us the, the y position of a certain point on the string. It has an x position and then it will also change with time. So y is a function of both x position and time t. All this means is that that how you know the y position of a certain piece of string depends on x, which is which piece of string are you talking about, and t, which is at what point in time. So if we pick this point here and we watch it, watch just this point moving up and down. What's the requirement on this this piece of string moving up and down in time. Well, the first requirement that I'll mention is that that, that this, this wave, this point on the string, I'm not actually sure how to draw this, but it can't, at the next point in time, it can't just, just suddenly jump. It can't jump down here, right? has to be at first it has to be you know at the at the next position right below it it has to continuously move down it doesn't just just appear just just teleport to this other point down down below we can express this this requirement that makes sense but you know what are you know we know that this doesn't happen in real life so we can we can express this as as the change in y over the change in time, just like we did, just like we did with 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 the position. So, so before it was the slope, and now it's just just how it's it's the slope in time, but we, we've drawn it looking at at x. So so it's a little less intuitive to call it the slope in this case, but it's it's the change in y over the change in time. And so again, the change in y is some number. I'll call it a. Again, it could be could be five inches. It could be twenty-seven miles. Whatever it is, doesn't doesn't matter in this case because the change in time is zero. This we're saying that this piece of string can't instantly be at a different point. So there's no 
a, a, a infinitely small amount of time, a zero zero amount of time. This can't, or another way, I guess a, a better way of putting it is that this piece of string can't be in two places at once. So, and if if that were the case, the the time derivative of of y with respect to t, the derivative of y with respect to t would be undefined because because we can't divide by zero. So I'll, I'll write this write this requirement down. D d t of y. Oops, I'm gonna write the wave function in orange. Y x y is a function of x and a function of t must also be finite it is finite so these we're finding out that all these different derivatives are finite based on physical arguments and the second requirement we're going to do so the first requirement is that, that basically that the points can't stick can't or this piece of string can't be in two places at once so its first derivative with respect to time has to be finite. And now, if you watched the last video, you might be seeing where this is, is going. Let's think about the second derivative with respect to time. And this argument is going to be very similar to, to the second derivative of the x, the second derivative with respect to x argument being finite. So we have Newton's second law. Force equals mass times acceleration. And we know that acceleration is the second derivative of x or, or of some position with respect to time. The second derivative. And I, I suppose I should actually. I'm going to make this y since we're talking about a change in y. It's not to not to be confusing. This is we're using y as the position here. So the second derivative of y with respect to t. We know that the acceleration of this point on the string of this point needs to be finite because well if if it wasn't if it was infinite that means there'd be an infinite force and 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 those don't exist. So unless there's an infinite force on that piece of string, the second derivative with respect to time of our of our function that describes our wave is finite. Because if it was infinite that would be an infinite force. And, and just to reiterate, this, this step here, the, uh, so the y is the position, the derivative of the position is, is the velocity, is the, is the change, how fast is the position changing. And then if we take another derivative of that, we get how fast is the velocity changing and that and that is our definition of acceleration and so we have between this video and the last video we have a bunch of different requirements a bunch of requirements for this function that describes our wave and and in the next video we'll try to take all of these and and, and make something out of it